Well, hey everybody, welcome into this video editing tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating a photo slideshow in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you are looking to create one, you've come to the right place, of course, because that's what we're that's what we're looking to create today. Uh, it's going to be pretty basic, pretty simple, but there might be some tricks that are going to save you a ton of time if you're creating a big slideshow, a little slideshow, or anything in between. We're going to go from soup to nuts, how to create a slideshow in Adobe Premiere Pro, and it all begins right now. All right, so here in Premiere, uh, you can see we have nothing open. Uh, we just have this uh, project, which I've created, but you can create any old project you like. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is create a new sequence. So the sequence is just your timeline. It's the sort of the spine, if you will, of your video. So go ahead, new item, sequence, great. I'm going to go with the digital SLR. So you can see you got all these available presets. I'm going to go digital SLR, 1080p, that's like standard HD, uh, 1080p 30, so 30 frames per second, and I'm going to name of my sequence slideshow you don't need to name it slideshow but that's just a name so I can keep track of what's going on here and you can see a new item shows up here called slideshow and sure enough I have this whole timeline out here I can play with now which is a whole bunch of fun uh, now aside from that in my finder now this is your Explorer window if this if you're working with Windows uh, here on the Mac I have my finder window and I have all of these different images there are a bunch of headshots I took for a bunch of friends of mine at an office down in Philadelphia and um, I'm going to drag these into Photoshop so I can take them and I can drag them right into Photoshop and drop them in this project, uh, test project folder bin area panel, if you will. And you can say they all drop right into place. Uh, voila, they're all in place. Now, in order to create uh, a slideshow, probably uh, the easiest way is to uh, go ahead and say, all right, we want to kick it off with this first guy. We drag him and drop him out here in place. And, um, well, he drops into place. I'm going to adjust my, my Premiere Pro window so everything's com everything comes back into view for us here. Um, and I'm going to move it here to fit. And you can see at 1080p, we're getting kind of a nice view of his chin and his shoulders. And that's probably actually not really what we want. I'm going to highlight that and, uh, well, actually, before I delete it, I'm just going to show you here. You can drag out a second image. Uh, make sure we click and drag out to our timeline. And then if I hit the space bar to play through this, it holds on the first image for a couple seconds and then click blinks over to the next image. So the next image also not lined up properly. We've got black bars on the sides. There's no transition. Everything's kind of funky and it's going to take quite a while if we go through this uh, one by one by one. So here is kind of a way to speed this up. Something you can do, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to toggle or not toggle. I see the word toggle there, so I'm distracted. I'm going to roll with my mouse wheel to scroll up all of my video tracks. Holding down the shift key allows you to scroll all of them at once simply by hovering over like any of these V1, V2, whatever, and just scroll with your mouse wheel and you're going to make your video tracks a little bit bigger. I can select image one, hold down my shift key and select the last image. So grab all the images and then drag them all out to my timeline and it's going to drop them all in uh, one long sequence just like that. Now that's great, but you can see that all of them are just, you know, whatever, this one, whatever, probably thir three seconds ish, something like that. And it's like, in fact, I can see here three seconds and 10 frames. So let's say I want them all to be five seconds. So I'm going to select all of them and delete them. How do I change that? Well, I could go through and manually adjust all of them, but of course that takes a ton of time. So instead we're going to go Premiere Pro Preferences General, and we have this option here, still image default duration. And right now it is at 100 frames and at 30 frames per second, 90 frames is three seconds plus 10 frames is a hundred frames. So that's why it's three seconds and 10 frames of default duration for each of these still images. I'm going to go to seconds and I'm just going to set this to five seconds. That makes that nice and easy. Go ahead and hit OK. And now if we drag all these guys out onto our timeline, we can see that it's still at three seconds and 10 frames. Why is that? Well, really what we need to do is re-import all of the images. So let's just close or hit the little garbage can to delete those images. And what we can do is right click down here and choose import. And I'll just navigate right here to where they are on my hard drive, select all of the images. I just click the top one, hold down shift, click the bottom one, choose to import. It's going to import those files. And because I had a folder selected, it actually imported them all into this folder, which is no good. We want to select all these bad boys, right click and choose to cut them to get them out of there. And then select out here, right click and choose paste. 
And there we go. We've pasted them all in place. Now you can see it's four seconds and 29 frames. So very close to five seconds for each of those images. Let's drag them all out into the timeline. And that looks great. Now we do need to resize these because you can see they're all kind of messed up. And some of them are probably too big. Some of them are probably too small. You can see they're all kind of different sizes. Yeah, this lady here, she's it's just too small. It doesn't even fill to the top of the frame. I don't mind if there's a little bit of a space on one side or the other. But I definitely want the images to go edge to edge at least either top to bottom or left to right depending on the orientation of the photo. So portrait versus landscape orientation. Now, one of the things that you can do to quickly just fix that problem is select all of the images, right click and choose scale to frame size. And you can see it scales this guy down to frame size and every single other image in our a bunch. This image looks very different because it's landscape orientation, but it is scaled nicely to the size of our video. So you can go through and we very, very quickly have this nice series of images. Now, the question uh, then becomes, well, what if I want to uh, place some transitions? I'm going to just zoom in on my timeline here, hitting the plus icon. We can come over to effects and we can go to video transitions, this folder right here. And we can go to dissolve and look at this cross dissolve. That's pretty cool. We can drag across dissolve out and drop it on the, the, the seam between two frames. And when we do that and I play over that, you can see we get a nice little, just a fast little cross dissolve zip right from one image to the next and that's in stark contrast to no cross dissolve where it just clicks to the next image so if we want to do that that's great but you can see how short my cross dissolve is right when I place it there it's it's just super fast so I'm gonna zoom in and I can actually grab an edge of my cross dissolve and make it much longer but again the problem the problem is we need to do it with all of our images and this would be a tiny little slideshow what if you have you know 100 images or 200 images or a thousand images that's gonna take forever well there's a preference for that too. Premiere Pro, and by the way, if you're on Windows, this is under the edit menu, edit preferences, but here on the Mac, Premiere Pro, preferences, general, the default video transition, look at how short that is, eight frames in a 30 frame per second uh, video. That means the, the, the transition is happening in less than a third of a second. So let's go to seconds and set this to just, there we go, straight up, one second. So the default video transition duration will be one second. That's great, so if we drag out, cross dissolve and drop it, now it's going to happen over the course of one second. It's a nice smooth boom. That's cool. However, we still would have to drag this transition out over every single uh, transition. That's no good. That's that's kind of annoying. Um, in fact, let's say we want to do a slide transition. So we go like slide and we drag this out and place it. Let's just look to see what this looks like. Va boom. You can see it just slides right out of the way. Um, but one, we can quickly apply a transition here by highlighting all of our video clips and using the hotkey shift D. You can see that, look, it's applied a default transition to every single transition and even the beginning. So it starts at black, fades the first image in and every other image, it gives us a cross dissolve. Now that hotkey shift D applies the default, uh, the default video transition. And we know it's a default video transition because it has this little box around it. Let's say we don't want to cross dissolve. I'm going to undo that. Let's say we want that slide that we just looked at, right? Or, or no, you know what? Let's go a little crazy here. Let's go page peel. All you have to do is right click on the transition and choose set selected as default transition. Now when I select all of these and hit shift to D, you can see I get the page peel video transition. Not really the nicest of transitions, but it's still an option. And you can set any of these visual video transitions as your default transition. Cross dissolve tends to be the one we use the most. So that's the default by default when you open up uh, Adobe Premiere Pro for the first time. So Shift D is going to allow you to place that default transition. So that's nice. The last thing that I want to cover is blending some music together. So I'm going to go out uh, and I'm going to go back and I've got two different video tracks here. I'm going to, or uh, video tracks, audio tracks. I'm going to drag these both into Premiere Pro and when you're working with especially larger slideshows a lot of times you're going to be using different songs different bits of music and if it's a 15 minute long slideshow the likelihood of finding an Aerosmith song that's 15 minutes long well I mean I'm not the biggest Aerosmith fan but I don't know that there's a song out there that they've done that's 15 minutes long so you're probably gonna have to mesh two or three or more songs together in order to achieve one long kind of continuous a slideshow you can blend the songs together to make them almost seamlessly fade one into the next using this type of technique. So I have this orchestral dubstep track uh, that I have. I'm going to drag it here and place it on audio track one. And if I play this, 
you can hear that it's just this kind of crazy audio track happening. In fact, I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to hover over my audio tracks here and pop them up, make them a little bit bigger so I can see the waveform. And then I also have this blues soundtrack. So I'm going to drag the blues soundtrack out here and I'm going to place it kind of right about there. So there's some overlap. You can see the blues soundtrack is going to start before the dubstep soundtrack ever ends. And then here's how I simply like to fade these together. You could do, in fact, let me just, let me do it this way first. You could line these guys up, go effects, and there is sort of the equivalent of the cross dissolve, audio transitions crossfade, and go with like constant power, drag and drop that. But you can see it's only going to let me drop it on either side of this. So what I could do is like drag this and just straight up overlap it a crazy amount like that. And just drag this way out like that and just see what that sounds like. You can see how it just kind of fades out that orchestral stuff right into the blues. Um, and when you've got two songs, especially from, these are two vastly different genres, this sort of eight bar blues and this dubstep orchestra type sound. So they really aren't going to mesh well no matter what you do, but you can still get them to fade pretty decently using this constant power uh, transition. It can be a really, really effective way to quickly blend music together uh, in Premiere Pro. And if you're trying to match volume, you can see that this this track is very, very loud. This one, the sound, the the, the audio waves are not peaking nearly as much. You can right click and choose audio gain and just up the gain so we could like boost it three decibels or something. And you can see that's going to really just make the whole track a little bit louder by controlling the input level. The gain is controlling the input of the, the audio track, whereas the volume slider is controlling the output of the audio track. So you can really go in, you can fade together all kinds of different music. And like I said, when it's from the same artist, if it's two Billy Joel songs or two James Taylor songs or two, uh, I don't know, two stinking Justin Bieber songs for all I know you can because the, an artist tends to have a, a reasonably similar sound you can usually get a really really good fade between a, a couple different songs especially if you really string out and make this fade happen over the course of you know 35 or 40 seconds you can get this nearly seamless fade from one song to the next uh, underneath your slideshow and just create a really really nice slideshow so now once you have the slideshow together I can just grab the edge of my music and like trim that back um, and what I'll probably do here I'm going to get rid of the, well, no, I'm not going to get rid of the sound. I'm not going to get rid of the sound. I'm going to hang on to the sound. And before we export the video, I want to show you just a couple different things you can do. So you can apply a pretty simple, I'm going to hit the little letter M here to just mute the audio track so we don't have to listen to that devastating dubstep every time we begin to play this track. Uh, if we want to do a little bit of animation, and let's say we want to take this guy and we want him to, you know, start out being maybe a little zoomed in and, you know, fade, you know, pan upward a little bit. I don't know. We can do something like that. So we can begin we can have him fade in uh, and let's just let's scale him up a little bit so I'm just gonna over here in my effect controls panel I have that clip selected which is really just an image and I can just drag and scale him up maybe like that and I'm going to set the Y coordinates kind of down here so we just see his sweater all right that's great and then I'm gonna go all the way back to the very first frame of this clip it's just totally black because it's being faded in and I'm going to hit the little stopwatch next to position. That's going to allow me to animate. Now I'm going to come out here to about right here before the fade out begins to happen and I'm going to adjust the Y coordinates again and I'm going to just you know, kind of animate or, or adjust it so it sort of is going to pan down to see his face or pan up to see his face, I should say. Uh, and, and what Premiere Pro is going to do is you can see it automatically placed what's called a keyframe and it's animated between these two keyframes. So all between here, it's automatically creating that animation. When we first pressed that stopwatch, let me just undo. Let's do the whole thing again. So we come out over here. Remember, we've already set where the image is going to start. The image is going to start at this 294 on the Y axis, which is the up down movement or the up down positioning I should say we come all the way back to frame one hit the stopwatch you can see it drops that keyframe we come out to here we change the Y positioning all right this is gonna end up being the ending position and Premiere says hey you have a starting keyframe I'm gonna place a a second keyframe and between these keyframes I'm gonna fill in all the frames necessary to create a nice smooth animation and then I can just take this keyframe and drag it all the way to the end of the clip so then the animation continues right through right through 
uh, both the fade in and fade out. So you can see we get a nice animation of this uh, as we, you know, just move through our slideshow. And you can go through and do this as many images as you like. Do that, you know, kind of Ken Burns effect where you zoom in on a part of the photo or the photo shifts and tilts a little bit and just add a little bit of life to your slideshows with a little bit of simple motion tween animation uh, using keyframing here in Premiere Pro. It can be really, really helpful. And last but not least, I would be remiss if I didn't just show you how to create a simple title. So let's say we want to just give people names. So this guy, this first guy's name is Todd. So what I'll do is I'll hit the new item button and I will choose title. And I'm going to name this Todd. I'm going to hit OK. And I can just use the text tool and like place text down here in the corner. And I can write, type out the word Todd. Use whatever typeface you want. I'm going to make sure I'm aligned to the left. And I'm going to just drag it right over to here. And the word Todd is fine. I don't really need to add anything else, but you could add additional lines of text to give him his position and, you know, maybe years with the company or whatever. And just hit the letter X to close that out. And I could drag this, this little title out and drop it above, above Todd. I could just duplicate this title item here by selecting it, right click, choose duplicate. And I could just name this. The next guy's name is Tony. So I'm just going to name this one Tony. And I'll double click here on this and I will select the text. And I'll go T-O and just N-Y. So we got Tony. Great. Close it out. And I'll drag Tony into place over here. So you can just very quickly go through Todd, Tony, Sean, June, and so on and so forth. Move through all the people. You can add different titles, add different bits of text, um, and just go in. And if you wanted, of course, to add the transition between these, select all of these titles once you place them. Shift and D, and you place all those cross dissolves as well. So everything just fades together beautifully. And you can see, along with our images, all the names are going to fade in and out and upside down, uh, just as you would expect. Now, we're going to go ahead and export this video. I'm going to show you how to export this to save it to something like YouTube or Vimeo or even Facebook. You can you can export it using these settings and get great results on any of those platforms. What I like to do is place what's called an in and an out point. All you're doing is telling Premiere Pro, look, I know you've got this timeline that goes on to infinity. The in and the out point, in between these two set sort of stakes, I want you to take all the video that I've edited there and export that as its own video file. So what I want to do is you, you can use the up arrow key. When you select the up arrow key, it goes to the very first frame of the selected clip or the, the clip that it, it is sort of hovering over. See, I'm, I'm hovering over this clip. I hit the up arrow key. It goes to the very first frame of that clip. I'm going to go over here as close as I can get to my first frame, hit the up arrow key, and it's going to for sure place me at 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 across the playhead position marker here. And that looks great. And now what I'll do is go marker and choose mark in. The hot key is the letter I, in. And you can see, wham, it highlights everything. So we need to mark an out point to say, look, Premiere, we don't want you to take everything just from in to out. And now hitting the down arrow key takes me to the last frame of any given clip that I'm hovering over. So I hit the letter, uh, hit the down arrow key, and there I am. Now to place an out point, I is to place an in point, hit the letter O to place an out point. And by the way, you can also go marker, mark out. And we've just placed an in and an out point. And you can see how it's highlighted up here on our timeline, uh, sort of the time code area. So this is going to be where Premiere Pro, it can look at this and say, all right, between the in point and the out point, that is the video that I'm going to take and encode and save out as a real deal finished video. And we can go file, export, media. And probably the simplest thing to do is to use some of the great presets baked into Premiere Pro. I almost always go with an H.264 format. It's a great, very versatile format. And there's a great preset in here. It is the YouTube 1080p HD preset. Super high quality, very nice uh, quality. You don't need to do much in terms of messing with video, audio, any of the stuff in here. Everything's going to come out really nicely. The one thing you do want to make sure you have changed is under here, source range, you want to set or you want to choose from this drop down menu sequence in out. Remember we set those in out points. This is telling Premiere Pro use our in out points and export just that chunk of video. And sure enough, if I use my little playhead here, I can see, all right, there we go. Yep, looks like that's good. And if I come all the way to the end, come to the end of the video and it just fades out the black and it got every single frame that I need. The video is going to be a minute and 49 seconds long. I can select the output name. I can save it to my desktop as, you know, whatever I want dot mp4 choose save hit the export button and bamo whammo slamo it's going to export your slideshow as a video that's ready to go up to vimeo or youtube or facebook or wherever you want if you've enjoyed this video make sure you leave a little like on it drop a comment below and subscribe to the channel as well you'll never miss another video editing tutorial in the future 
And what a beautiful thing that would be. So for creating a slideshow in Premiere Pro and working with default transitions and thousands of transitions at a time if need be and tweaking the presets and animating and fading and titles and letters and the type tool and and a hundred other things that we just covered in this longer than I thought it would be tutorial on creating a simple slideshow in Premiere Pro. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.